the 2023 election means a lot to Nigerians and Nigerians. Um, political actors in their trades have been going all over the country in search for votes from the electorate. While we understand that the motion at this time is, is high, and also the polity as it is should not be eaten more than it is now. And my take is this, no matter what really happened or whoever wins the 2023 election, we must make sure Nigeria wins. People have always asked me, what do you mean by saying that Nigeria should or should win? Nigeria will win when we understand that the life of any citizen is not worth taking because of politics. Properties of citizens are not always also worth vandalizing because of politics. So if we do all these things, Nigeria will win. And one of the advocates, one of the uh, things we've been telling presidential candidates all around is that the winners must be magnanimous in victory and run a government that really reflects the national cohesion of the country. While also, whoever does not win should remember that Nigeria is a country that you can always win some other time. So, um, this opportunity to tell them in case as whoever we to a three election, it is Nigeria that win at the end of the day. Thank you. I think the message is clear. Yeah. Yeah. That after these general elections, 2023, Nigeria should be the ultimate winner mm -hmm. in all of this. Uh, we cannot overemphasize this. It is very important that all our political actors play by the rules, uh, by the books, because uh, out there there have been attacks on a few presidential candidates. Uh, we've seen cases where supporters were beaten up. We've seen uh, videos where people with a signal or shirts of a particular part, uh, political uh, party was being harassed. I think we should look beyond every, all our choices and decide that any, whatever the outcome of this election, Nigeria should still be as one. What are your takes, Elijah? Well, the thing is, um, the politicians and everyone should have Nigeria at the center of their politicking. I mean, politicians this time around. You know, it's not all about you. We can't be. We can't have selfish politicians. They have to have um, the issues at hand. Security. Uh, you saw what happened. You had what happened in Nasarawa. It was bombing recently, and uh, several, several things. So, whatever politics we have to do, politics is not the end game. The end game is good governance. Politics is the means to the end. So whatever politicking we're involved in, uh, politicians or people that are in, have vested interest in this committee to three election, have at the back of your mind that the end game for this is Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. has to win. Nigeria has to benefit immensely from our party or what we're offering. So whatever you're doing is not just about you or what you stand to gain. It's what as a country, what would the country stand to gain? That's what we should be talking about, the issues at hand. That's why I only see politicians should not waste their time in fighting themselves unnecessarily. If you have opportunity to speak to everyone, talk to us with empathy. And yes, you have a right to respond to criticism from your opponents, but do so with the intent of explaining what you really want to tell us, not spending time talking about another person's personality and attacking the person. It's not fair. You saw what happened in the other state, right? The recent behavior of a certain, I think there was Senator Dino Malai, mm -hmm. trying to make jest of another uh, big baller to health, singing the song, that song that was uh, formulated by the confront, what do you call them, pirates confrontality, right. right? It's not a very fair thing to do as a gentleman. Mm -hmm. Decent politics, you don't have to make. Um, okay, let me give you an example. I think this story, maybe we can learn something from it. During the 2009, is it 2009, right? 2008 election in the U.S. Uh, Obama was sworn in 2009, right? January 2009. So the Obama, Barack Obama was the um, presidential candidate for Democrat Party, right? And John McCain was the presidential candidate for Republican. Republican. Now, these two, 
because I, I have, I've been privileged to see videos of town hall meeting where John McCain had the opportunity of meeting um, some, let me use the word, people like him. Um, you know, America is a kind of multiracial country, so you have the whites, the Caucasian, whatever. So this white town hall meeting where you have more of the white guys. So there was this particular woman that was asking him questions, and the woman tried to denigrate Barack Obama. She was like, we don't know who is this Obama guy, we don't know him, who is he, and she, she said some things, she, she used some language that was like not very appropriate in describing Obama, like, like kind of attacking the personality of Obama. Do you know what John McCain did? Yes, she did that maybe to like in favor of John McCain, but do you know what John McCain told her? Uh, Madam, I don't appreciate you using such language on Barack Obama. This is his political opponent. Obama, according to him, Obama is a decent man. We don't just agree in policies. And my policy and my idea is different from his own. We don't agree in our ideologies, but he's a very decent individual. And I don't appreciate you using such words. That's what politics is supposed to be. And then this is John McCain. John McCain is, was a prisoner of war. He was a Navy officer. He served in the US Navy. He was captured during the war. I'm not quite sure the war, whether it's Vietnam or so. I'm not quite sure. I think it's Vietnam. Or one of these wars between America and one of these uh, is it countries or something. So uh, um, um, Joe McKim spent some time in prison. He was tortured in prison. And eventually, during the process of torture, they injured him. You know, he got his hand broken. And so, so when he came back, he came back. I don't want to use the word disabled per se, but he had to, they had to go through surgery. So, so there's this, he couldn't, there are some certain things he could not do with his two hands. He can't carry his two hands up, he can't lift it two up. But he can maybe do some things with caution. You know, we hear Barack Obama saying something bad about him. Because health is, is, uh, is, 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 you don't have control over your health, ultimately, even though you try to live a very decent life. We have a president of America that was on wheelchair. Yeah, that was a president of America. As it was it, is it Franklin the Roosevelt, if I'm not mistaken, also one of the Roosevelt's, one of them. I'm not quite sure whether it's Eliano or Franklin, but one of the American presidents in time past was on wheelchair, and he did very well. I'm not saying that the, the health of a president is not important, but you see, everybody should be given opportunity to contest fairly, in as much as you are mentally and physically stable. But don't attack personalities of opponents. Spend your time talking about what you want to do. And be sincere about it. Don't attack personalities. Stick to the fact of the matter. Victor, I think the, the message is that uh, no matter what, in politics, there are some boundaries that you should not cross. Yeah. Do you agree with it? Yeah, I mean, you guys have said something, things that are very profound. And what Suleiman, you know, had um, also said is quite agreeable. I mean, when you think about it, uh, many Nigerians vote from different standpoints, right? Some vote from the standpoint of religion. Some vote from the standpoint of education and literacy. Some vote from the standpoint of party. Some vote from the you know standpoints of um, tribe and ethnicity, right? You know, and these are there are several other standpoints, right? So, because Peter B is Christian, I'm going to vote for him. I don't know his policy. Because um, Tinumbu is APC, I'm voting for him. I don't care about his policy. Oh, because Kwan Kwaso is educated, I'm voting for him. You see that now. So uh, when you look at, when you vote for those kind of things, you know, what happens is we leave the person and we are voting. And I mean, there's even the, the, there isn't the standpoint of because Shagun is my friend or I work for Shagun, Shagun is my CEO. Whoever Shagun is voting for is who I will vote for. There's that standpoint too, right? Yeah. So people are voting for different reasons. And that's why I said earlier, if we vote for party, we're going to be flawed on many levels. So this is something that I think will be usable to everyone listening to the advocate right now, you know, this Sunday evening, or I mean, the, 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 if you're listening to the repeat broadcast, right? So it's very important to um, vote for people with the values you believe would make us win as Nigerians. Because I mean, if I believe that at the presidential level, it is X, Y, Z, that would make us win. I vote for the person. So I look for the so I look for the party after I have identified the person. So I don't start by looking for party. Because I mean the last election there was a certain woman that just went to the ballot, just PDP everywhere. He didn't care who <laughs> just 
his PD does if so does his PD. So you see that. So that's that kind of. So what if at the local level it is somebody in Abga that is doing well? So you vote for that person regardless of the party. So when, when we move from people into party, then we'll get it. But we move from party into people, we've put the horse. Are we? How do you say it? We put the, the cup before the horse, and it's wrong. So I agree with Suleiman. We need to win as Nigerian. If not, you know, we are going to have it hot the next four years. Suleiman, your final thought on this. Can we have your final thought on this? Yeah. I agree with other advocates. 2023 election should be about issues, not attacking personality. And I think um, politicians stuck in trade is sometimes when they are left with nothing to discuss about their manifestos or their plan for the nations, they go down the dirty lane of attacking one another personality. And one thing is just this, just like um, Elijah and um, said, one thing is that who is the loser when politicians don't get to discuss their manifesto, when they don't get to discuss the, their plan for Nigeria? It is we, the electorate, that are the loser at the end of the day because we won't be able to have anything to hold on to. So this 2023 election should be about issues. What do you have for us as far as health is concerned? What do you have for us as far as education is concerned? What do you have for us as far as inflation? Our most pressing issues disturbing Nigerian land is the issue of poverty. How do you intend to solve the issue of uh, poverty? So it should, it should be the issue based. And, uh, and I bet you, if we can stick to that, just one month to the election, you can see a lot is what's changing already. We should be thinking of how do we now dissect each of the manif uh, manifesto of each of these uh, parties. That's my thing. Thank you, uh, Suleiman. Another reason why it is very instructive, this is just a short one. Uh, we have over 90 million yeah. voters presently, uh, as said by the, uh, by the INEC. And one major thing that has always been devil our elections over the years has always been voter party. At the end of the day, you see that lesser than th this number that has been recorded will turn out to vote because of the fear of violence. So we are appealing to our politicians to please let us make this an election to ensure that Nigeria still remains as one after February and March 2023. Elijah Felix is next after the break. <laughs>